40. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another intro to another episode <laughs> of Do Go On. It's Dave here with Matt and Jess in the studio. Hello. What you are about to hear is our Halloween special, our spooky, spooky spectacular for the year that we recorded uh, live at Howler in Brunswick in our home city of Melbourne. Howler even has a bit of a Halloween Howler. Santo. It totally does. Is we did not connect that on the day. Yeah. Yeah, we're idiots. Ugh. We had... Hindsight, am I right? Ugh, yeah, 2020, <laughs> yeah, am I right? <laughs> we did have a lot of fun uh, recording this episode, so we do hope you like it as much uh, uh, or have as much fun as we did making it. And uh, we're going to be back at the end uh, with our usual Patreon stuff. But until then, maybe I'll just throw to ourselves introducing this live in front of a howler crowd. Over to you, us. <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> I do say. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. This is cool. This is cool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Do Go On Live at Howler. How you doing out there? <laughs> Hell yeah, my name is Dave Warnicky and I'm joined on stage by my two best friends, Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. Yeah! Aww. Aww. Thanks, Dave. They didn't know that. <laughs> what a way to find out. You're like top 20 for us, so... Oh, top oh. 20? No, yeah. oh, Jess, don't I'm talk to me. I'm being generous. Hey! Hey, everyone! This is ridiculous. Hello. That was a bit, a bit of fun with the intro there. Enjoy that. <laughs> bit of bloody I sp- fun. I spent more time on that than I did on my report. <laughs> <laughs> and that will show. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. But thank you so much for coming out. Now, this show here at Howler is our Bon Voyage show before our UK tour next month, which we're very excited about. So thank you uh, for coming out and sending us off in style. It's fucking nuts, isn't it? Can you believe it? Anyway. I mean, I say style. Matt is wearing thongs on stage. <laughs> so, good on you, mate. You, you said you weren't going to mention that. We lied! It yeah. is, it's fucking summertime out there. Grow up. Mate, grow up and wear boots like a real boy. <laughs> I was going to say man, not appropriate. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. It is, it is, uh, Great to be here. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we always uh, like to start these live shows by asking uh, for a round of applause. If you've never, ever heard Do Go On before, if you've never heard the show, give us a round of applause. Okay. Oh, a few. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Very thank cool. you so much. That's okay. Um, you clapped quite loudly. but um, Yeah. <laughs> Very proud Sorry. about it, aren't they? Yes, and I never will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be very distracting. Okay, on the, on, the, on the other end of that scale, give us a round of applause if you have heard the show before. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank goodness you're in the right place. Most of you. Most of you. That's going to make this next hour of in-jokes a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, we're recording this uh, in the middle of October, but this is actually the final episode that will go out as part of Blockbuster Toba Topher Grace Month. Maguire. Maguire, show me the money. Fest. What did you do for Block? That's what a lot of people I heard asking out the front. Oh, what are you up to for Block this year? Yeah, that's... It's just a question I heard it said a lot. I don't know. Dave hired a condo, he was telling us. Really? Yeah, got a condo for Block. Yeah, got a condo for Block. Cost me a, cost me a fortune. Yeah, bump up the prices, don't they? Yeah, scumbags. <laughs> those, those condo owners. Anyway, um, so this is part of Block, and because it's coming out at the end of Block, I don't know if you guys know this, but at the end of Cocktoberfest is what, what I like to call it. At the end of October, 
there is a very special day. A very special, spooky day. Oh, Dave's wedding anniversary, yes. <laughs> yes. It's terrifying. I don't know how many years it's been. <laughs> You've got to guess, what is this, paper? Paper? Do you want paper? Why do they give paper? Anyway, uh, because this is uh, coming out at the end of the month, we are going to make this a bit of a... Halloween special! It's actually, it's going to be coming out on Halloween. Is it? Isn't that spooky? <laughs> it's yeah. almost like we planned it. Yeah. <gasps> uh, Ooh. I'm just going to do that a lot, to be honest. Um, probably won't be that spooky. Just going to be me going, Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, Okay, <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> Didn't warn you there, sorry about that. And because it's, it's a Halloween special, what we've decided to do is all do a mini report on a spooky topic. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it is daytime, so if it does get a bit too scary, you can just head outside, see some sunshine, call your mum, whatever you're Unless you you're do. a vampire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. They can't see the, the sun. <laughs> what, what? That's not how it works. They're yeah. not blind to the sun. No, don't look they at the sun. They can't see it. I can't yeah. see it. That's what like Donald Trump was proving. That? That's not how it works. Yeah. But Matt, you, said, you were telling us you were writing your report uh, last night, which, if anything, is amazing that you didn't do it this morning. But, <laughs> and you were uh, alone in our studio space, which is a, you know, a inside big... a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. And you were actually a bit scared going to your car last night. Fucking oath. <laughs> but this is a rough neighbourhood. <laughs> there were some hoodlums. In the studio? Yeah. Oh, no. We've got to get that lock fixed. Yeah, we should do that. We should also start the yeah. program. Yes, we should start the program. So to the, uh, the few people that haven't heard or if you're listening for the first time at home, what we do is we get uh, given a topic by a listener. These are all listeners suggested topics. And we do a report on it. The other two people don't know what the topic's going to be. So we've all picked a, a topic. We've checked with a third party to make sure we haven't accidentally done the same topic. Because that would be really awkward. And, we've got uh, one friend that we always use for that. Like if we're doing... Like we always use her to be our middleman, and sometimes I feel like that's the only reason I message her and I feel bad about that. Oh. So I do, I ask her about the topic and then I'm like, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care so you, much about you, that bit. You, you do know she's here. I know. <laughs> Thanks for everything you do, Emma. Yeah, thank you, Emma, I love you. And, and how, how are you are going? You? Yeah. <laughs> That's good fun. That is good fun. Just a bit of fun. Sometimes All right. I worry that because it's been three years, our brains are just turning into one... I was going to say mega brain, but that's a bit... That's kind, <laughs> one isn't it? Not... One <laughs> average brain. <laughs> one tiny, tiny brain. Do you think soon I'll have access to your memories? Hope so. Oh. Blackmail! <laughs> well, uh... I hope you can remember what number wedding anniversary I've got coming up. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even remember, remember getting married. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a bad guy. Okay. Uh, I believe it's, it's... I'm going to go first here. Yes. My uh, topic. We tried to keep it uh, to time, but let's find out if I did that. Uh, Four hours my, uh, later. We always get on to the topic with a question. So my oh. question for you two beautiful people. And then when I imagine you don't get this, I throw it out to the rest of you here. <clears throat> so little faith in us. We're My get spooky, it. spooky topic. My question is, who was the 20th century's power couple of paranormal investigations? Matt and Jess. <laughs> so close. You're the 21st century power oh, couple yeah. of Mul paranormal. Mulder and Scully? Not Mulder and Scully, who I love. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're going to know this. Uh, does anyone want to have a have, hazard a guess? It is the Warrens! <laughs> well done. Nerd. <laughs> uh, the topic I'd like to cover is paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. <gasps> Lorraine. The quiche, yeah, the quiche herself. <laughs> It's a really, it's a spooky name, Lorraine, isn't it? So, yeah. so terrifying. Uh, this topic was suggested by two people, Ian Whitehead from Wales, who I imagine is not here, but also... Classic Ian. Also by Ethan Du from Melbourne. Ethan, are you actually here? Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Ethan, if you're listening... Ethan, why do you think I picked this shitty topic? <laughs> it was for that moment. This, this subject sucks. 
<laughs> I sh- oh, we, should get, we should check. Is Ian Whitehead from Wales here? That would be amazing. <laughs> no? Okay. okay. All right. Well, anyway, this is for you guys. Uh, so, Ed and L- L- Lorraine. Gone early. Uh, L- have, you, have, you guys L- heard, have you heard of them? No. But I love a power couple. Oh, they are a super duper power couple. Oh. They are famous for love investigating and inspiring uh, the Amateurville Horror, which you may have heard of, the book and then uh, series Ryan, of films. That's Ryan Reynolds, isn't it? We got a firm no over here. A firm no, but then like a vague yes over the back? Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, who was it? Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Stand up, get out. <laughs> Stand up, get out. Uh, Ed and Lorraine are also the uh, inspiration for the horror film franchise, The Conjuring. Oh, no. Which I am way too scared to watch, so there will be no more references to horror films. I think that's just about a close-up magician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most terrifying of all street performers. <laughs> Don't make me talk to him. <laughs> there it is. First regret phrase for the day. Uh, uh, so if you're not familiar with, the, with this couple, this is how Ed and Lorraine Warren are described on their own website. Warrens.net. I, I guess Warrens.com was taken. Which is surprising because looking at it, it, is, it looks like one of the original pages from the internet. It is a terrible website. Great. Uh, this is how they describe themselves in the third person. <clears throat> For over 50 years now, Ed and Lorraine Warren have been considered America's preeminent experts on the subject of spirits and demonology. Even more important, perhaps, is the fact that they have also been the very same people for the past 50 years whom religious authorities have repeatedly called in to control some of the most profane outbreaks of diabolical phenomena in this country. Cases where priests become possessed. Cases where people are physically attacked. I mean, you should leave that to the police, to be honest. (laughs) Cases where unworldly entities manifest and then preside. Cases where time is violated and the physical environment is completely rearranged. Cases where spirits don't just haunt a house, they visibly tear it apart. Spooky, spooky stuff. Which I love that if the house is haunted, you don't call them. You only call them once the house has been haunted and it's been torn apart. Yeah. I think there's a ghost in my house. You think or you know. Yeah. Where's the destruction? You think, call me when you know. Uh, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Their business is suffering. Dave, you, just as you were ripping into them, I've looked up DaveWarnicky.com. Um, you got .com? Yeah, got .com. Uh, DaveWarnicky.net. That's some accountant. Whatever. You've called, it says, and you were giving them shit for talking about themselves in the third person? How about this paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I don't know what to pick. There's so much gold in here. Um, Dave uh, Warnick- the best looking comedian in the world. Dave Warnicky is a 27 year old award nominated comedian. Uh, in brackets, it says losing. I don't want to make it when you're funny. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Warnicky or Warn Dog, as literally no one has ever called him. I thought this was going to be funnier. Um, <laughs> No, but it's, it's only funny, it's not funny because he's proud of it, you know? Yeah. If he was like, no, don't, then it would be the best, but his ego won't allow him to ever do that. Um. Oh, no, don't re- read out a list of my long accomplishments. <laughs> my long accomplishments, fuck. <laughs> it was nearly that good. <laughs> oh, anyway, back to Ed and Lorraine. Uh, Ed was born in 1926. He is no longer with us. He died in 2006. Okay. Uh, but Lorraine is still alive. She was born the year later. She's 91 years old. Young. <laughs> that's fuck, good Okay, fun. I was going to be like, good on you, Lorraine. Now I'm like, fuck off, Lorraine. <laughs> Let me say, that's not on their website, so you can't hold that against yeah, them. Yeah, right. Good on you then, Lorraine. Uh, together, they claim to have investigated over 10,000 paranormal cases, which is one every single day for 27 years. Oh, my God, take a holiday. Or, if they take the weekends off, at oh. least one every day for 40 straight years. <laughs> not including a couple of weeks off for Christmas, so I don't know their Christmas plans. But what I'm going to do... He hasn't researched very thoroughly this time. (laughs) What we do know is that they have investigated some very famous paranormal cases, and I'm going to tell you my favourite of those cases. 
Now, if you're not already on board, some of you seem to be a bit suspicious of these guys. As e experts in the paranormal field, let me read some more of their biography from their own website. Ed and Lorraine Warren have dedicated their lives to this work, and they share the wisdom they have gained during their extraordinary career in this field. The work they perform is remarkable. And you can be certain, after all this time, they know things that are completely astounding. <laughs> the cases they divulge will shock you, yet it is the significance of what they say that will actually floor you. <laughs> Moreover, the Warrens don't mince their words. They know what they're talking about. They have seen it, and they have done it. Oh, <laughs> oh they've all right. done it! Yeah, Woo! let's party. Ed and Lorraine doing it. I thought they were talking about the uh, scary clown. Oh, no. They have done it. Yeah. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> Freaky Three, cool. Threesome with it. Uh, so you're wondering who these people are. Well, Ed Warren is a demonologist. And That's not a real thing. No. Where uh, did he get his degree in demonology? Uh, demonology.net <laughs> dot com was taken <laughs> one brain uh, L Lorraine Warren is a quote trance medium what does that mean? I don't fucking know but they complement each other perfectly and as I said at the start they are a power couple to the demon stars <laughs> didn't write that down so you riff that that was a bonus, little bonus do you riff that? Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. What a riff. That will be on my website later tonight. <laughs> Dave Wanneke is known for such riffs as... <laughs> <laughs> now, according to allthatsinteresting.com... Oh, is that the one I was... Yeah, it's a great right? website. It's, it's bloody a bloody really good website. Good website. Do yourself a favour. <laughs> if there's any lulls in the show, just pull out your phone. <laughs> Off you pop. Uh, Lorraine said that ever since she was seven or eight, she could see auras around people. She was too scared to tell people in case her parents would think she was crazy, so she kept those powers to herself. But then she met her husband, Ed, when she was 16. She was finally able to open up to a fellow weirdo. <laughs> you see, Ed had grown up in a haunted house and was a self-taught demonologist. Okay, all right. So, they... so that doesn't... I mean, that's not anything. <laughs> yeah. No, he got his degree from the School of Life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a lifeologist. <laughs> school of life, school of lies, they're all hey, the same Jess, thing. Hey, Jess, by the way, I also see auras, and you've got a beautiful one. It's just a light behind me, Matt. <laughs> one of my friends, if I may, one of my friends works on, uh, like, camps for young kids, and one kid, one year, he could see auras. And um, there was this, there was a one adult on the camp who was a bit bit rough she was like a, a bit strict and my friend asked this kid what colour is her aura and the kid goes oh black there's nothing I can do <laughs> oh, I'd love to help but there's nothing I can do I love that kid well that kid could get a job in uh, the occult museum that uh, Lorraine and Ed founded in the basement of their research centre what? in the basement yeah which they adorned with satanic objects and demonic artefacts. Yeah, great. Were they Satanists? Put that underground <laughs> where you can't get out easily. Yeah, yeah there's Good. no emergency exit. Good. Uh, are they Satanists? No, they are not. In fact, they are quite opposite. They're very deeply religious types trying to rid the world of evil. Evil. <laughs> also, e books. <laughs> so, sounded like I said that. They're not fans. Uh, now, so there's a bit of background. The case I want to talk to you about that really put them on the map was a doll called Annabelle. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. It's a pretty name. I love the name Annabelle. It's a terrifying name. It's a terrifying name. As we were name. about to it's find out. It's a terrifying out. name. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. It's uh, spooky. Uh, the Warrens claimed that a doll was given to a 28-year-old nurse named Donna by her mother. Weird gift. That's already weird. Don't give me dolls. Give me cash. <laughs> <laughs> you are 28. I am 28, and give me cash. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will, Jess does have a jug up the back for snacks and magnets. I will be accepting notes. So this doll, <laughs> only accepting notes. <laughs> uh, the quote, cuddly doll was a Raggedy Ann style doll complete with button eyes and floppy red yarn hair. Button eyes are terrifying. 
Where's the pupil? I don't like it. I'm sorry. Well, I was thinking the doll seemed quite nice, but Lorraine Warren, our, our trance, says, quote, looks are deceiving. It's not what the doll looks like that makes it scary. It's what has been infused within the doll. Evil. <laughs> I love this lady. Anyway, Donna. So it's not the small child's doll that we should be worried about. No, it's the evil. Okay. A bit of a flipperoo. <laughs> yeah. I know. She's not conventional. Uh, anyway, Donna, who owned the doll, started to notice that the doll was changing positions on its own. Warren.net says, Sometimes the doll would be found with legs crossed, arms folded. Other times it would be found upright, standing on its feet. Several times, Donna sometimes left the doll on the couch before leaving for work and would return to find the doll back in her room on the bed with the door closed. Hmm? So someone's fucking with her. Yeah. <laughs> She does have housemates. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Or siblings. My brother would do that, 100%. <laughs> well, would you rather do this? Then Donna and her housemates started finding parchment paper with written messages saying things like, help me, help us. Hmm? That's a nice message. Yeah. <laughs> that is nice, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, let's work together. <laughs> Just all look out for each other. <laughs> Stop making it, you and me. We're not enemies. It's us. <laughs> help us. Help us. <laughs> Help us. <laughs> you know, nice. Yeah, it sounds so, so nice. I've written here, as if that wasn't strange enough, the girls claimed that they didn't even have parchment paper in their house. They only had printer paper. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it come from? What kind of house doesn't have parchment? <laughs> Grow up. You were an adult or what? The most terrifying part, they didn't even have a house. Oh. Oh. That is, that is that pretty is sad. sad. That yeah. is sad. Yeah. It's tragic. Next, the doll started showing up in even more rooms and she seemed to, that she looked like she was bleeding. Oh. Mm. Sorry. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you. Unsure of what to do, the owner of the doll turned, as you do, to a medium. Uh-huh. Yep. Rather than throwing out the doll who said the doll was being occupied by the spirit of a young girl named Annabelle Higgins. This is what the medium thought. Annabelle... A median? Pardon? Median. Medium. Median? Medium. Medium. It's not a... <laughs> comedium? <laughs> Continue. Uh, this is what the... I'm going to call them psychic. Thought. Psychic? Medium. <laughs> Uh, Annabelle was a young girl that resided on the property before the apartments were built. They were, quote, happy times. Ooh. <laughs> she was a young girl of only seven years old when her lifeless body was found in the field upon which the apartment complex now stands. The spirit related to the medium that she felt comfort with Donna and Angie, the housemate, and wanted to stay with them and be loved. Feeling compassion for Annabelle and her story, Donna gave her permission to inhibit the doll and stay with them. They were soon to find out, however, that Annabelle was not what she appeared to be. This was no ordinary case and definitely no ordinary doll. Donna felt sorry for the doll, but her friend Lou did not. He thought the doll was evil. This is what happened to him, according to Warrens.net. <laughs> Lou awoke one night from a deep sleep and in panic. Once again, he'd had a bad recurring dream. Only this time, somehow... Something seemed different. It was though he was awake, but couldn't move. He looked around the room, but couldn't discern anything out of the ordinary, and then it happened. Looking down towards his feet, he saw the doll, Annabelle. It began to slowly glide up his leg, moved over his chest, and then stopped. All right. <laughs> you're looking down, you're like, oh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, let's just see where this goes. <laughs> It went for the chest. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't do what you're thinking. <laughs> hey, we support you. Um, in whatever tangent you want to go on. <sighs> Well, it moved up his chest, then stopped. And within seconds, the doll was strangling him. Paralysed and gasping for breath, Lou, at the point of asphyxiation, blacked out. 
He woke up the next morning certain that it wasn't a dream. How big is this doll? <laughs> Honestly, it's about that big. It's about the size of like a baby born. So it doesn't have hands that will fit around your neck, <laughs> Lou. More like loser. <laughs> that's what Got Lou. Him. That's what Lou. It doesn't. That's what Lou stands for. I can confirm. Yeah, his full name is Loser. And it also would be just puffy, like warm yeah. hands. How do you get it? It'd feel quite nice. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Round the back, ooh. <laughs> Let's just see where this goes. <laughs> uh, so this is when our friends Ed and Lorraine took an interest in the case and contacted Donna. After evaluating the doll, they, quote, came to the immediate conclusion that the doll itself was not in fact possessed, but manipulated by an inhuman presence. The Warrens claim spirits do not possess inanimate objects like houses or toys. They possess people. An inhuman spirit can attach itself to a place or object and this is what occurred in the Annabelle case. He knows that because he self-taught it to himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me just uh, talk to my professor. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Classic Ed. <laughs> so, Ed Warren drove the doll Annabelle to his museum for quote, safe keeping. But claimed the doll willed the car's brakes and steering to fail repeatedly. <laughs> so what he did was he threw holy water on his back seat passenger to stop the meddling. <laughs> stop throwing holy water. <laughs> Devil's be gone! <laughs> Why did he have holy water with him? Oh, sorry, it's Ed. Of course he's he got, did. He's got it in his pack, ready to go. Yeah, in his demon pack. Uh, this is again from Warren's website. Annabelle is believed to be responsible for the death of an individual who came in contact with it. This doll also reportedly slashed a grown man several times across the chest. She terrorised Donna for months until the Warrens and an Episcopal priest were called in and an exorcism was performed. Although Annabelle has been since exorcised several times, it is believed that some energy is still attached to this doll. The Warrens claim that had Donna and her flatmates experiences lasted just two or three more weeks, the spirits would have completely possessed, if not harmed or killed, one or all of the occupants in the house. Ooh. <laughs> These days, she is part of their museum. Annabelle is kept in a glass box secured with ritualistic prayers. <laughs> Another quote from Lorraine. We have a priest come in and bless the museum, including Annabelle. These are prayers that bind the evil, much like an electric fence for a dog. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Ryan Buell, who was the co-founder of, Paranormal Research, of the Paranormal Research Society, claims he saw Annabelle's head move up and down, startling him, as if Annabelle was nodding at him, as if to acknowledge his presence. <laughs> and you can still see Annabelle locked inside that glass box in the Warrens Museum to this day. Or so I thought, until I saw on their website, warrens.net, that the museum is currently closed due to zoning regulations. <laughs> And if that's not a possessed doll at work, I don't know what is. I don't know. The spookiest regulations of all. <laughs> don't you reckon there's something sus about a story where the only people who believe it happened also profit by it being real by selling people tickets to their museum with that thing in it? I mean, that was a weird way to structure that sentence, <laughs> but... Um... Once I started, I could not stop, and it just... How long did it go for? About eight hours. <laughs> Everyone Ooh. left. Now, I know we're all very sad that you can't go and see the museum, which according to Facebook has been closed for over two years now. Aww. But I am pleased to say that you can book a buffet dinner date with Annabelle the doll. What the and fuck? I am not joking. How much? Well, October 26, 2018. So, which gives you guys in the room time, or April 6, 2019, for the people at home, you can pay 169 US dollars to have, nice. quote, nice. 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 <laughs> you can have, quote, an evening that will begin at a restaurant banquet room located in southwestern Connecticut, in brackets, one of the best in Connecticut. There you will dine on a fine buffet dinner consisting of chicken, fish, meat, and pasta. <laughs> and you will get to see Annabelle. Although the doll will be housed in a protective cabinet made from wood and plexiglass, 
And as well as 169 US dollars, you have to sign a release form stating that you absolve the host, Lorraine Warren, and the restaurant from, quote, any liability or traumatic influence associated with viewing the items or being in the presence of Annabelle and or occult items. I love that it's one of the best buffet dinners <laughs> in Connecticut. What's we that like? should go. We should go, yes. What's that like, top five worldwide? It's got to be. Buffet dinner. Now, I don't know if I've given this away here. I'm a bit of a sceptic. I didn't believe any of this spooky stuff about Annabelle. Sorry to say. Mm. But as I was writing this, something spooky happened to me. Oh, my God. My computer fully froze for three whole minutes. (laughs) And when it came back on, my doc had just written over and over, Don, 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 (laughs) Don. Look at that. You guys can say, don, 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 don. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know. Is that Annabelle telling me, you better fucking not make fun of me in front of a crowd? I'd, wow. I'd say it's more likely it was Don. <laughs> <laughs> or the original owner, Donna. Oh. Oh, oh. And one final note, I should be shitting myself right now because this is from warrens.net. Since the case was built... Annabelle, the the case that she's in, no longer appears to move, but she is thought to be responsible for the death of a young man who came to the museum on a motorcycle with his girlfriend. On the way home, the young man and his girlfriend were laughing and making fun of the doll. When he lost control of his motorcycle and went head on into the tree, the young man was killed instantly, but his girlfriend survived and was hospitalized for over a year. At least he died doing what he loved. (laughs) Laughing about an evil doll. (laughs) Who doesn't love that? I'm doing it right now. Yeah, it's the best. Uh, When asked about what happened, the young woman explained they were laughing about the doll when they lost control of the motorcycle. Ed Warren warns, you do not challenge evil. That no man... And that no man is more powerful than Satan. (laughs) And if Annabelle, if you're listening, I'm really sorry. (laughs) Really sorry. Isn't Isn't that what Ed's dedicated his whole life to? Challenging Satan. Yeah. Yeah, but not laughing at. No, oh, okay. Yeah, you're not laughing at. Basically putting Satan in a, a small glass box. <laughs> yeah, and charging you to look at him. Yeah. Uh, but or that have is... dinner near him. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but that is my report on the Warrens and Annabelle. Thank well, you very much. Hey, Ronicky. <laughs> well done. Well done, Dave. Well done to keep that relatively short too, Dave. Yeah, that was impressive for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now I'm going to... Do the same and keep it real short. Um, just so you s- Sorry, I just spoke into my, my beer. <laughs> Hang on. How does this work? Are you okay? Do you know which one's the talky one? Just let, me, let me have a drink. Do a bit of both, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. You like this more than anyone else. I'm here for you. Dave's all about the visual gags. Yeah. On a podcast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At home, they don't know what I've been using as a microphone. <laughs> hey. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the new two go on. <laughs> Let's, Let's see where, see where this, this goes. goes. <laughs> Fuck, man, that was one of the best things you've ever done. Um, I did not write a question as I never do. Thank you, thank you. And when Dave earlier said, and we always start with a question, I did a little, oh. And I heard a few people here go, she didn't write a question. (laughs) And they were right. Um, So I'm gonna, ooh, riff one. (laughs) Well, was your riff, I'm gonna make up a question? Yep. but I really just want to say, have you heard of, insert topic name here. Okay. Ooh, I reckon um, I can get that right. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of the Pollock Twins? Uh, the Cricketers? No. <laughs> Sean Pollock. <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> the Twins. <laughs> Is it... <laughs> Has anyone here heard of the Pollock Twins? Has anyone here heard of Sean Pollock? <laughs> Has anyone here heard of cricket? (laughs) This was suggested by Sandy Tai. Is Sandy here? 
We get a never. lot of... They never turn up. Sandy, Sandy suggested last week's topic as well. Really? Oh, she's on a roll. The um, last week's topic was fucked as well. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> True. She's not here because of the daylight. <laughs> <laughs> good on you, Sandy. Thanks yeah, for everything. Jess, is this your second in, I presume, a triptych of... Creepy twins. Creepy twins. I love creepy twins. Oh no, you've done this. Is your third twins. You What's did the. Other the one? Oh yes, this is Cray. number three. The Cray this is twins. Three. Okay, this is my third twins. Oh, the Gibbons you twins. You love it. You love twins. Love, you love them. You love, love twins. It. You love twins. You love them. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted. <laughs> you fucking got me. Sorry about that. I will oh apologise. Oh my god. Uh, Do you guys see me get God? <laughs> That was brutal. Sorry, it was a bit yeah, much. Yeah, no, you'll be apologising for that later, thank you. <laughs> so let me take you back to the quiet town of Hexham in Northumberland, England. Ooh. England is scary. It's a spooky place. Yeah, it's so um, old. And their teeth are shit. <laughs> We're gonna be there so yeah, soon. Yeah, please, please come to our show still. <laughs> Did you say their team is shit? Yep. <laughs> Which team? Teeth. Well, I haven't. Teeth. Oh, I thought you said team, like the English cricket team destroyed by Sean Pollock and the South Africans in the late 90s. <laughs> oh, hang on. Teeth. 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 Woo! Did you hit a six there, mate? <laughs> I got caught. <laughs> Even in your <laughs> dreams. You Even suck. in my dreams, I'm bad at sport. <laughs> it's good to be realistic in your dreams. <laughs> Woo. I'm lonely in mine. Um, <laughs> You're realistically lonely. <laughs> you don't want to wake up and go, oh, I want to go back to sleep. In my dreams, I'm just sitting alone quietly. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, anyway, Northumberland, the family of John and Florence Pollock. And they had two young daughters, Joanna, who was 11, and Jacqueline, who was six. John and Florence ran a grocery and milk delivery business, kind of an early Uber Eats. <laughs> Wrote that one down. Um, and then I did this, I went, <laughs> So it stayed in. <laughs> yeah, like, I think I'll celebrate by ordering some Uber Eats. <laughs> um, Joanna and Jacqueline were very close, even despite uh, a five year age gap between them. But on the 7th of May, 1957, Jacqueline, Joanna and their friend Anthony were on their way to church when they were struck by a car. Uh, the car was driven by a local woman who had taken an overdose of aspirin and sedatives in an attempt to kill herself and then went for a drive. What? <laughs> what are you two- doing? Uh, d- yeah. The two Pollock children were killed instantly in the accident. Um, and Anthony unfortunately died later in hospital as well. And uh, Florence Pollock, their mother, she spun into a deep depression in the void uh, because of the loss, but the highly religious John, their dad, maintained hope that his daughters would somehow return to them. Oh, <laughs> oh John. Um, oh, no. Despite this ordeal and the tension between uh, the very religious John and the agnostic Florence, he was like, nope, one day she's like, shut the fuck up, John. <laughs> uh, Florence became pregnant the following year, and on the 4th of October 1958, she gave birth to healthy twin girls. The twins were surprised. Their doctor had told them it was just one baby um, based on the heartbeat and neither of the parents had any history of twins in their family so they were expecting one and they just had two. So is, is their heartbeat perfectly in unison? Oh, creepy twins. Oh. Yeah, I, well, or it's the 50s. and yeah. um, <laughs> I reckon it's that. Yeah, medical technology, <laughs> not that great. It, who, who, who are these people? Because I thought, I thought this isn't the same couple who had the twins. So... What happened? What? They had... They had... Okay, sorry everyone, take a sec. They had two daughters yes. who weren't twins. Okay. They were killed in the accident. Yes. Then they had... Uh, twins. Twins. Okay, now I'm with you. We good? Yeah. It and is going to get confusing because it's... Yeah. And, and the whole time the dad, John, thought they were going to come back. Yeah. And it's a lot of girls' names, so just try to keep up. Um, so the twins were named Gillian and Jennifer, uh, and they were considered by John to be a sort of miracle, and he truly believed that his dead daughters had come back to them. No, nope, different daughters. Um, don't be creepy, John. Um, 
The family moved from Hexham to a town called Whitley Bay when the twins were just a few months old. And as soon as they were old enough to talk, the twins began asking for and describing specific toys that Joanna and Jacqueline had owned. I want to play with a truck. (gasps) (laughs) Even calling their dolls by name. Okay, Okay. truck. Beautiful name. (laughs) Beautiful. I want to play with truck. Which was really bizarre because their parents had boxed up the toys and stored them in the attic and the girls had never seen (gasps) these Had they put them inside a glass plexi case? (laughs) Because you've got to do that. I can Dave gets weirdly intense and does this heavy breathing thing. It's really strange. <laughs> oh, you should see me play sport. <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> nah, good on you, mate. Um, so they were, they were asking for things that their sisters had had. They didn't even know they had older sisters. They'd never seen any of these toys before. Um, their parents brought the toys down from the attic and the twins instinctively collected the correct responsive ones that had belonged to Joanna and Jacqueline. What, so they had extra toys that they just kept in the attic? Like decoy toys. <laughs> All right, which one do you want? Hmm? Uh, hmm? Uh. And they chose the right one. Um, and they even uh, proclaimed that they were Santa gifts, which was correct. Their older sisters had been given them for Christmas. <laughs> we got a little... <laughs> on the side it said... Two older sister from yeah, Santa. From Santa. And they put two and two together. Um, the two twins liked the same foods that Joanna and Jacqueline had. Wow. M- mushed up apples. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. They Joanna liked those. They can't get enough of this breast milk. It's crazy. <laughs> just it's like the older sisters. So weird. So weird. It's uncanny. It's uncanny. It. It's, they're I'm even telling getting, you. They're even getting it from the same breasts. <laughs> So weird. Weird. So weird. Um, like this uh, one's getting from the left. That is pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> I will only take from the left. <gasps> Just like Jigigigil. <laughs> that was that one of them. Was Jacqueline. Was you going for? Jacqueline. Jigigigil. <laughs> Close. A little. Close. Um, the twins had uh, similar personalities, mannerisms, and behaviours. And um, Gillian once pointed at a birthmark on her twin's forehead and accurately said that it was where Jacqueline had hit her head on a bucket when she was younger. So one of the twins had a scar that was very similar to her sister's scar, but only one of the identical twins had it, like a birthmark. Weird. Some would say (laughs) spooky. That is. At a stretch. Um, These things kept happening over the years. The girls... Eerily, were giving details of things that only their parents and Joanna and Jacqueline could have known. They were terrified of passing cars and had to be, like, it was to the point where it was difficult to get them to cross the road. Passing cars are the ones they shouldn't have been worried about. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't sure either, so. <laughs> Fuck. Don't turn around and hide regret face. Um, Florence, the mum, once overheard the two girls discussing the actual accident that had killed Joanna and Jacqueline with details they could not have known. One thing they would supposedly do often was that Jennifer would rest her head on Gillian's lap and Jennifer would say there was blood coming from her eyes. Oh, no. I mean, that is weird behaviour regardless. (laughs) Telling you, twins. Any any identical twins in? Oh, thank God. (laughs) Because I was about to be like, identical twins are fucking weird. <laughs> and then just slowly someone at the back is just like. <laughs> and their twin far away is feeling that pain. Yeah. Oh, my birthmark. Oh. <laughs> All twins are Harry Potter today. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the heart to tell him. Um, when the family took a trip back to Hexham, the twins knew their way around and could accurately point out landmarks by name. And <laughs> Post office. <laughs> How do they know? <laughs> and, and the school they remembered attending, um, which was Joanna and Jacqueline's school, even though the twins were only a few months old when they moved away and couldn't have remembered any of this. Ooh, they could have seen pictures. If all of this is true, it is obviously freaky as. Do you believe it? 
Do you believe? Um, she's 72. Cher, 72. <laughs> Looks incredible. How, Sorry. how quickly do you think you can get from... That quickly. They were with me. They were in shock that she's 72. That was efficient. She looks was... amazing. Anyway, I'm not sure that, that I believe, but... <laughs> this is how you dodge every question. Yeah, I break like, into song. Where were you last night? Cher is 72. The police are like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Case I, closed. I don't know if I believe, Matt, but somebody I... who did believe... Ooh, fucking segue. John? ...was Dr Ian Stevenson. Uh, who oh, was... did he get his degree from demonology.net? <laughs> He was a, I believe a psychologist, who was highly interested in evidence of reincarnation in children. He started visiting and interviewing the twins as part of his research. Now, the twins were identical, meaning they came from a single egg. egg. <laughs> single egg. Single egg. Yet they had slightly different builds, which matched their dead sisters, who had not been twins. So one was sort of taller and very slim, and the other was sort of a bit shorter and stocky. I am believing this. I reckon that's the sisters. Well, in a weird turn of events, these apparent memories of the twins' past lives began to fade at around the age of five, after which they led relatively normal lives. Right. That's they just true. forgot all about it and went on with it. Apparently, much, much later, when Gillian was an adult, she had, like, a couple of dreams that were from, like, a sister's memory, we think, but... But also, I mean, once they got past the age of their sisters, they wouldn't... Maybe something happened there. But their sisters were 11 and four. Four? Six. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I think that adds up in this mythical shit. Yeah. Yeah. So they got to five and let's say a half. Uh, Well, 11 minus six. Yeah. That's what I'm... Fuck off, nerd. (laughs) Uh, Let me just do some math. Let me just crunch some numbers over here. So some people argued that... um, family members or their parents might have like talked to them about it but their parents like we and their their mum was a real skeptic too and she was like we never talked to them about it at all there's no way they could have known any of this but some people are like nah bullshit yeah i trust her but john feels like he's whispering in their ears yeah hey is that remember remember that awful accident you were in (laughs) oh yeah dad of the year i don't think that's true at all that sounds like (laughs) a bad dad so i don't know what do you do you guys do you guys think it's reincarnation? Nah. Nah. You think it's bullshit? <laughs> Who's with me? It's real. Yeah, there you go. You got a wave. That's nice. Hey. But I think favorite. we can all agree. It's my favourite. I think Yoo-hoo. we can definitely agree. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. We can definitely agree, though, that it is spooky. Whoa. <laughs> And I'm halfway in between. I want to believe. Yeah. X-Files, great show. <laughs> is that what that is? Is that a catchphrase from them? I want to believe. I want to believe. Yeah. That's good. Also, can I point out too that I kept to time really well. So, <laughs> pressure's on, Matt. Yeah, yeah timekeeping. Let's give a round of applause for that. Snappy, <laughs> Now, Matt, you're going to bring, it, bring us home strong here. Yeah, better be oh, strong. Yeah. Well, you, look. Well, th- this is the reason we picked this order is because you are like, my report's fucking sick and it's going to shit all over yours, your dogs. And we were like, Matt, you're being weirdly aggressive. And he was like, nah, fuck you, dickheads. And then it's he, he fly kicked me, which was odd. And I didn't think his body could do that because he's old. Um, and he, like, he kind of misjudged and he went a bit early and kind of went like, eh, and then he fell and we had to get him up. And Anyway, so the report will be pretty good, I think. <laughs> Jess, that was a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in life after love? 72. Honestly. I wrote this question. What ghost inspired the 2012 film When the Lights Go Out? What I ghost? Sing again. I mean, let's name all the famous ghosts we know. Casper. <laughs> Jess, your turn. Nearly headless Nick. I mean, you know, Casper's film was called Casper. <laughs> Subtitled, When the Lights Go Out. Uh, here is my report know. on Casper. I don't know what ghost. <laughs> Casper 2, When the Lights Go Out, back in the habit. Thank you. 
Uh, the ghost was the black monk of Pontefract. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have one more crack at are that. Are you uh, mispronouncing the word monk? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I knew I was off to a bad start when I said monk wrong. <laughs> I love the that monk, TV show, Monk. monk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do... Uh, hang on, you do a podcast about monkeys. The word um, monk is there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That, that's going to help a lot. Even if you have to say monkey, but they just kind of whisper the E. Okay. Okay, good tip. Thank you. The black monkey of Pontefract. <laughs> the black monk of Pontefract. All right. This was suggested by Will Orlando White. Cool. <laughs> Uh, and he, you know, you can suggest a website to look at. Yeah. Uh, for a good resource. I know. Yeah. I clicked on that website. Did you? It said, "Not available." Oh. <laughs> Network connectivity issues. Was that the first time that you shouldn't do this spooky topic? Yes. Yeah. But he it, persevered. Honestly, he's pretty, so brave. Against better judgment. <laughs> it is. It is. It is a pretty spooky topic. Here we go. <laughs> okay. In the year 1966... No. Fuck you. No. Say it. Say it. No. Dave, can you say it? I won't. A genuinely good year. Yeah. yeah. Saints Premiership year. No big deal. All right. And the English uh, football team. And something else someone told me recently, but bloody hell. Jam-packed year. All right. In the year 1966, the Pritchard family moved into a new home at 30 East Drive, Pontefract, in Yorkshire. England is crazy. It's so crazy! <laughs> crazy. <laughs> England is crazy. They have streets and everything. Yes. I mean, that's... Oh my God. We're sort of through the scariest part now. Um, <laughs> I'll just go through a bit of detail from here and then. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Because I shat myself. <laughs> the Pritchard family was made up of a husband and wife named Joe and Jean. Bloody hell, the J names today. Mm. Hey? Mm. Oh. <gasps> Your name's Jess. Um, <laughs> Three years. He's just figured that out. I picked it up before, yeah. Uh, their children, Diana and Philip, and Jean's mum, Sarah. Strange things started happening soon after they moved into the house. Joe, Jean and Diana were away for a long weekend. And teenager Philip, he wasn't interested. He was getting a bit cool. Yeah. He was about 15. He's like, I want to stay at home, Mum, Dad. I'm too old for family holidays. Um, and then you get to 20 and you realise how expensive holidays are. And you're like, can I come with you, please? Yeah. Oh, definitely. The only reason I went to China. <laughs> Free trip. I met a panda. You met one. Yeah. Touched his ears. It felt like a dog. Dog fur. You met a panda. Yeah. God, your life's interesting. <laughs> he was cool. My favourite animal. Love him. Top five moments of my life. Top ten. I've had a great life. <laughs> Actually, it was a pretty horrific 24 hours. I had food poisoning. I was vomiting all night, but I was not going to miss my opportunity to meet a panda. Hope you didn't pass it on. They yeah. don't eat very much. Yeah. Don't make bamboo no. spew a big They no eat good. heaps of bamboo, which is basically no nourishment at all, so they have to spend 18 hours a day eating. Uh, it sounds like the dream. Why are you laughing, Dave? <laughs> They're my favourite animal. Their life is pain. <laughs> Sometimes I think you're an evil doll. <laughs> well, someone's clapping that. So we Is keep my... him in a little box. <laughs> Let me out. Let me... And uh, then I, I nod at people to acknowledge their presence. It's weird if it's a downward nod, terrifying. If it's an up nod, cool. Yeah, Annabelle was just like, sup. <laughs> I'm stuck in a box, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, but down nod, fuck it, spooky. That's weird. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so... <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Philip stays at home, but the parents leave uh, Nana Sarah at home with him to look after him. Good. Sarah spent the day inside. Classic Sarah. 
But while Philip was out gallivanting around... Betty was. One article threw in a bit of editorialising. It said, probably doing, you know, teenage boy things, drinking, smoking weed. Yeah, they probably. Just, out of nowhere they said that. They said, probably same as kids of today. Like, it was real weird. Anyway. Yeah, he's 15. He's probably wanking in a bush somewhere. <laughs> I was going to say, on a street corner. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you both went into your personal histories for the answer. Oh, to be young again. <laughs> I miss that corner. <laughs> uh, so S- S- Sarah stayed at home, Philip was out, but it was a, s- a sweltering hot day, which is a bit unusual for, for England, right? Yeah, so it was like 20. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, heat wave. Look after the elderly. Why don't you just grow a pair? <laughs> bit sexist. Yes, Sorry, tear boobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make you way hotter. <laughs> I like that. I got a warm chest. <laughs> you don't know how boobs work. <laughs> but I imagine. Heaters. Yeah, they keep the warm in. <laughs> All right, we don't have time for this. <laughs> Dave thinks boobs are just little radiators. Yeah, what an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) So it was a sweltering hot day, about 20, 20, 22 degrees. Um, But there was no breeze, so no relief, right? Mm. But despite this, inside... (laughs) <laughs> no breeze <laughs> That was a creepy laugh No breeze <laughs> Alright Yes, I control the weather <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong with them What I imagine happened was um, Someone <laughs> leant over and said Do they ready <laughs> 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 um, but despite this, no breeze, and she was inside. Despite this, all day she was feeling cold air brushing against the back of her neck. Right. So she had a fan on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she. And then, a... oh man, that is spooky because you know when you talk into a fan, it makes your voice all weird. <laughs> that is oh, spooky. You should have heard her neck. It sounded so weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have to read the next paragraph. Oh, no. um, Later in the day, Philip returned home and he walked into the living room to discover a powdery substance falling from the ceiling and covering the carpet. Yeah, we've all been teenagers, am I right? (laughs) (laughs) Alright, alright. Just casually implying that he's doing drugs again, alright. Sarah... (laughs) Could have been talcum powder, Dave. Could have been asbestos. (laughs) Do not snort asbestos. Learn that the hard way. <laughs> I didn't. There was an aww. <laughs> like, oh, that ma- she makes more sense now. Yeah. Uh, Sarah called another daughter of hers over to see what she would make of it and also help with the cleanup. Sure. Her daughter, uh, Marie. When she arrived, she went to the kitchen to get some cleaning gear, but on entering the kitchen, she slipped on a puddle that seemed to form out of nowhere. Alex Mack. Yes. <laughs> GC 161. So you, you think yes! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> so maybe it's, the, it's not the Black Monk, it's the Black Mac. Black Mac. Black Mac of Pontefract or whatever it is. <laughs> Definitely not saying that right. It sounds a bit like the Nana pissed herself in the kitchen and had to blame it on someone else. <laughs> Where'd that puddle come from? It wasn't there a second ago. <laughs> Apparently then puddles started to form around, I don't know. <laughs> She'd had a big night. Yeah, nah. Some yellow, some green, some brown. <laughs> All right, um, it was a big night. The green was foaming as well. Um, that's true. Okay. Um, the water company was called and they couldn't find the source of the issue. Powder puddles, not very normal, but maybe a little paranormal. <laughs> I hate you. Question, question mark. Things settled down later. Uh, well, then say it like a question. Maybe a little paranormal? There it is. <laughs> paranormal? 
I normally ask questions by just saying question mark at yeah. the end. Yeah, I know. Is, it, is that We're not the right way that. to... <laughs> that's not the right way to do it, question mark? Um, Can I have coffee, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, buddy, yeah. We'll get you coffee. Yeah, it's never caused any issues He's in the past. He's back again. <laughs> Things settled down, uh, and later Sarah was watching a little television when she heard Philip shouting that shit was going down again from the other room. Did he say that? Is that? Are you paraphrasing? Shit's going down. Yeah, no, nah, this is all. And then it's like language. Yeah. <laughs> even Swear though, jar. Even though they're in absolute turmoil. Uh, she hurried to the kitchen, and she couldn't believe what she was seeing. The kitchen was a complete mess. Yeah, there was a teenager in there. Am I right? <laughs> Hey, pigs! With, you guys might have found this as well, uh, these kind of stories, they don't seem to be reported on by Britannica or any of those kind of sites. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, but this next paragraph is from creepyghoststories.com. Dot <laughs> <laughs> com. Dot com. Dot com, they got in early. Uh, the worktops had tea leaves and sugar all over them. They both stared in disbelief, and as they did, they witnessed the tea dispensing button being pushed in and out and watched on as more tea leaves were released over the countertop until it was empty. But the button kept being pushed. <laughs> Sarah, now starting to feel scared, started shouting at it to stop, but it didn't. <laughs> Although I assume it eventually did. Um, it's probably not still <laughs> clicking 52 years later. Over the next few hours, things remained weird. A light switch turned itself on in the hallway when they went out to figure, hear what a bang was all about. It was a big bang. They went, what's this? And the light went on. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> if you guys, you guys can act tough, but this shit is fucked. Uh, banging noises were heard as well as uprooted plants turning up on the stairs and the pot was at the top of the stairs and usually the plant was in the pot at the bottom of the stairs. Ooh. I don't even think you guys get how fucked this is. <laughs> the plant was in a different spot. <laughs> uh, crockery cupboard started to shake violently. Ooh. As soon as uh, the boy went over, Philip, to open it, it stopped. <laughs> Things calmed down eventually, and the two were getting ready for bed. Uh, Philip was in bed. Oh, what? Going to bed? Why are you what? still in the house? Are you going to bed? Oh, okay, well, it seems like it's less spooky now. Time to turn uh, in. I had Time to torch the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> I had the exact same reaction as Why did none of these people burn things? No, you got to Burn it all! Keep it for a museum. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they were going to bed. Sarah went to Philip's room to say goodnight, but when she got there, she found that a chest of drawers started violently thrashing from side to side. <laughs> Fearing for their lives, they're like, I think we'll sleep somewhere else. And they went around to Marie's house to stay the night. That, I mean, that would have been my call three minutes in, I reckon. I re yeah, one light goes on without me explaining it, I'm out of there. Yeah, I'm and out. I'm torching the place. Yeah. yeah, I'm burning down my entire apartment building <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I don't think they'll be that mad, once I explain. <laughs> I explain. Hey, uh, I couldn't remember putting that light on and it was on. So... And then they'll give me a medal and say thank you. Yeah. They, you really saved us. You probably could have told us you were burning the house down rather than just doing it. You sure someone else in the house didn't turn it on? I mean, I haven't checked with the other people in the house, but I don't remember doing it. Where are my matches? When the rest of the family returned from their holiday from Devon, Sarah filled them in on the weird events they had missed. The family was sceptical. <laughs> Philip is like, I'm never missing a family holiday again. Yeah. yeah it's karma. He is, but, but the family like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then nothing happened. They got home and it just stopped for two years. But Ooh. in 1968, things got freaky again. Even, probably even freakier, to be honest. Started up in a familiar way with strange banging sounds and cupboards vibrating. The family joked about it, even giving the nose an, a name, Fred. Oh, Fred's at it again. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> anyway. Torch the place. The local press uh, gave him a different name, Mr. Nobody. Which they're, is they're like, he's got a name, it's Fred. So. <laughs> I guess it could be Fred Nobody. Um, 
I, th- I thought, no, Mr. Nobody, it is kind of a dismissive name. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you got a ghost. Yeah, Mr. Nobody. But it also is a, a pretty freaky ghost name, I reckon. It's not a bad ghost name, Mr. Nobody. Imagine him. He's got, like, no face or something. Oh. <laughs> Things escalated. According to an article on another Kraken website, the 13th floor.tv. <laughs> Oh, registered in Tuvalu, great. So you know it's good. Activity seemed to pick up when the Pritchards had guests over. So this is oh, other people's show off. <laughs> Mum used to tell me off for showing off when we had friends over. That oh fuck, I hated that so much. I was like, sorry, you're boring, and I'm trying to entertain. Are you just just shaking crockery? <laughs> Stop showing off. <laughs> well, yeah, were you doing any, any of these things? Uh, so, plates would fly through the air, banging would get much louder, the local police were called in, and multiple... Banging lo- would get much louder? Is that what you were doing? Nice. The police came round and several officers apparently reported seeing objects fly through the air and furniture flip over by itself. And that's from the 13th floor dot <laughs> TV. TV. yeah. So, I believe it. Uh, the Huffington Post listed some other in- inexplicable events, like green foam, like I was talking about before, coming up from taps and toilet. That's just a big night. Objects being <laughs> thrown around and levitating. Photographs being slashed with a knife. And even family members being slapped. <laughs> that is the best prank. Psh, Fred. Fred did it. You can just slap your dad in bed. Run away and you think it was Fred. <laughs> I'm trying that, I'm trying that. Getting slapped by a ghost is very funny. <laughs> well done, Fred. Well done. As the police seemed helpless to stop the weird goings on, the Pritchards called in the local church, Catholic church, who performed exorcisms on the house. This seemed to piss off the ghost, though. <laughs> uh, and this is from the 13th floor again. Instead of cleaning the house of spirits, the exorcisms appeared to irritate Fred, making him more violent. For a time, Fred turned his attention to the religious items in the home. Crucifixes would be found on on the ground broken into pieces. Inverted crosses would appear on the walls, painted in red and black, even though there was no paint to be found in the home. That's a bit weird. (gasps) Do they have any paper in the home? (laughs) Only Dave, do they have parchment? (laughs) Very specific type of paper. And yep. a quill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably in 1966, the weirder thing would have been if they had printer paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like a, a, like a big thing of reflex. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Uh, to this point, Fred had remained invisible, but this was about to change. One night, Jean and Joe woke to see Fred standing at the edge of their bed, watching them. They stared back at him silently as he can... <laughs> He stared at them, they stared at him. <laughs> Staring contest. <laughs> <laughs> he blinked. <laughs> and now, now he has to leave, that's the rules. That's the rules. Got him. <laughs> high five. That was a terrible high five, I'm embarrassed. Try again. There we go. Look at the elbow, like that guy said. No, Thanks, that the, guy. It's the only thing he can say. <laughs> oh. It's the elbow guy. What a beautiful moment then. Hey, what a beautiful moment. All right. So appropriate. Um, he was wearing black robes. Oh. So this is where the name came from. But well, it was dark. Yes. So they could have been navy blue. That's true. <laughs> could have been a dark grey. a very dark red. True. You know, like a crimson. Mm. But in the, in the dark bedroom, I assume, and they're not sleeping with all the lights. Well, I would be, actually. <laughs> Depending mm. what Fred wants you to do, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he can turn on the lights. All right. Um, or turn them off. Ooh. Oh, that'd be handy. It's like having a clapper ghost. Yeah. Fred. Yeah, it'd be good if he was a helpful ghost. Yeah. That'd be all right. I wouldn't mind being haunted if they could, like, get me stuff. So he's wearing the robes. The remote's so far away. <laughs> Fred. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> He's wearing black robes, hood covering his face, and that's the description uh, that gave him his famous name, the Black Monkey of Pontefract. I mean, they also had a a coat rack at the end of their bed, and they'd just hung up their winter coats there, too, the night before. But, nah, fair enough. It was a weird coincidence, but... (laughs) 
Uh, he was getting more and more violent also at this time. Their daughter Diana was even dragged upstairs by an invisible pair of hands clutching at her throat, leaving finger mark bruises around her neck. Torch the place, seriously. <laughs> that's sort of, that's the most famous, um, that's the most famous haunting, the most violent. Mm. Other ones with hands include um, floating gloves, <laughs> like they're conducting an orchestra. <laughs> Davis, you know. I said 164 beats per minute, not 170. <laughs> Gloveless fingers. <laughs> Gloveless fingers is floating. Hey, there's a demand for that product. Someone's gonna fill it. Someone's gonna fill it. But you people didn't back my possible campaign. Unbelievable. Visitors also would cop it, so they'd see the shows, but they'd also cop some of the violence. You said they'd see the show. They'd see the show, put on a show, plates, <laughs> dancing hands, um, spirit fingers. <gasps> spirit fingers. Right. Um, Chopsticks on the piano. He's doing it all. Some of the guests would get scratched, some would get strangled, some would get slapped. <laughs> You'd stop visiting, I reckon. It was 1966. Like, no, you come over to my house this time, a, I reckon. It was a different time, you know. No. They still had fire. There was only three channels. <laughs> so burn the place. Uh, so who is this monk? One researcher reckons he's figured it out. He, he deep-dived into it, and he found that in the area, there was a monk who wore similar robes um, in the time of Henry VIII. And he was charged with murder and hanged. And he was hanged in gallows that were right across the road. Right. From the house. Because ghosts can't go far, can they? Seems like it. Yeah. Seems like one of the rules. I'd have to ask a demonologist, but I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they stayed there for seven years. No. Seven years while no. they were What are haunted. you doing? Absolutely not. But after these seven years, it seemed to quiet down, and that's when they decided to... Sell? Well, they couldn't sell. No one would buy, but they, <laughs> they did move out. Um, when it started to quiet down. Yeah, isn't that... Makes it feel like it's a bit of a coincidence, doesn't it, really? <laughs> uh, but the house has been frequently visited by paranormal investigators ever since, and there continue to be reports of, on uh, weird goings-on. One of the best photos that have been taken in the house um, was widely publicised in 2016. It's just a nice family portrait. Was it, Matt? No, it was a, it was a photo of the, of the monk. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking of a different photo. <laughs> they got some professional portraits in... on that year. It Verve, you know, the ones where it's like glamour shots. It was one of the... I know. The guy took the photo. They are good. If you're ever down at like a high point or something like that... Mm. I'm always almost signing Check them up. out, yeah. So cool. We should do one together. <laughs> Let's talk about this later, but I think this is a, I think this is a winner. <laughs> so the photo is... It's, the guy took the photo and he didn't notice it at the time. But when he got home, this photo was a lot darker than the others and he brightened it up. And in the corner of the photo is a mirror. And in that mirror there's a thing that could kind of look. <laughs> it really, it does, it genuinely looks like a face, but I mean, I imagine millions of photos have been taken in this house and this is the first one, it's like, ooh, that ooh. tiny thing in there. Maybe Fred's camera shy. Uh, in 2012, a film called When the Lights Went Out was made about the events at 30 East Drive. It was directed by Gene Pritchard's nephew, Family Bloody Loves It. Strangely, as that film was getting promoted, the black monks started to stir again. <laughs> oh, what are the chances? <laughs> He's attending the premiere. <laughs> you're, 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 you're gonna, no. <laughs> A producer of the film even bought the long empty property and organised a screening in the house for cast and crew. But according to English tabloid newspaper, The Daily Star, the night could have been attended by another special guest. <gasps> One who goes by the name... Sydney Poitier. <laughs> Fred, Fred, I was thinking Fred. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Sydney Poitier. Yeah. And this it's is... an Academy Award winner. Yeah. 
He loves film. The, the girl, uh, the actor who played the young girl in the movie said it was pretty uncomfortable, yeah. which I can imagine. But Is that because the film was terrible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she like, could did, not watch it back. It did not come up well. <laughs> uh, but and then this, she burnt it. <laughs> yeah, finally. Mm. This is a quote from the Daily Star that suggests that maybe uh, the ghost was in attendance. Several people reported their mobile phones suddenly running out of battery. That is fucking spooky, man. Several. Several? Not everyone. But several people's batteries ran out at night. Yes. After using their phones all day. Whoa. How do you know all of this? Were you there? No. (laughs) Anyway, believe it or not, I forgot about that, but that is the spooky note I'm ending the report on. (laughs) Yeah. Well done. So I think, I think that just... Does that bring us to the end of the show, uh, Dave? That uh, does bring us to There the... is one thing. I got a little surprise for you that I thought... Um, last time we did a live show in Melbourne, or last time, about a year ago, we did a live show, you humped and headbutted <laughs> a watermelon. Seeing as this is the Halloween special, I got a little surprise for you. I cannot wait to see what this is. <laughs> no. Dave, would you do the honours? I don't. Big finish look, of the show. To be honest, I am now committed to that watermelon. And um, my doctor did tell me if I ever headbutted another fruit, I uh, would damage my brain. I don't know if you. I've got. I, I've got a. Song. What'd you say? It's a gourd, mate. It's a pumpkin. pumpkin. (laughs) Yep. Now pay that. When you're ready, Dave. Look, I appreciate the effort that you've gone to. Can you film this? Yep. (laughs) All right, what if I make you a deal, Matt? I'll hump it if you headbutt it. I got a special song for us. Here's it, it Rob. Is it Anastasia? <laughs> Look, I swear this has context. <laughs> I don't remember what it is. How did yeah? I don't know. Welcome to the newcomers. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. (laughs) I can't believe I did that again. (laughs) I will attest to it. Last year, I've watched the film back of me humping the watermelon. It looks like I don't even go for it. I really headbutted it. Made no mark. I reckon you really headbutted that. <laughs> there is zero, zero evidence. Are you okay? <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> well, it probably didn't go how we planned, but uh, we did it. We did it. You encourage them. Woo! Uh, well, that does bring us to the end of our spooky Halloween special, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, seeing us off. We're heading off to the UK first overseas tour in like, t- what is it, two weeks? Two weeks from now, and when the episode comes out, only uh, a few days. So thank you so much for, uh, for coming out. Can we have a big round of applause for everyone at Hale for hosting us? Woo! Rob on sound, thank you so much. Rob. Hey, we have... Um we will be over in that corner. We've got some T-shirts left, so um, if you want to grab a T-shirt, you can grab those. You can have a chat to us and say hi. Yeah, and just get come a say hi. Um, and there is also, like, if you want, there's another jug there that may be for snacks and magnets. And there's no pressure, but, like, there's, there's an no expectation. Yeah. Um, 
Don't, uh, we don't will be do selling it. a signed pumpkin to the highest bidder. Oh yeah, if anyone oh, wants yeah. a pumpkin, I've got I've got one to give. <laughs> is it that one? How did you know? <laughs> oh, but that is the end of another episode of Do Go On. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Later. Bye. Bye. And we're back. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I bet some of you missed what we do in the studio. <laughs> the magic. Mm. <laughs> oh, very good. Have you been working on your, on your been, noises? I've been practicing, yes. Be- now, let me noise. just say that after that sh- live show, I feel our bon. Has been officially voyaged. Yes. Oh yes, if my I- voyage feels very bon. Oh, <laughs> Trey bon down in my voyage. <laughs> Your voyage? Oh, my voyages are feeling very bon. Okay. It was that was so much fun to do that live uh, show, and then we hung around for quite a while after talking to so many people. I have felt guilty ever since. There was a couple. Yes. From Horsham, I think. Horsham. Who we said we're going to come out and get a photo with, and then I didn't see him again. I don't know if they got lost or whatever. I'm so sorry. Uh, Message me or something, and I will drive to Horsham. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to kidnap Dave and Jess, and we'll get that photo. I don't think it's kidnapping if you tell us. Uh, No, that's probably not true. I think if you say, I'm kidnapping you, and you take someone, that still counts as kidnapping. Yeah. Yeah, no, well played. Past me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. But it was so cool to meet you very briefly and everyone else we met. Had some such a good, fun time. Met so many cool people. Because yeah. everyone was very, very nice. So Our lovely. friends who took the pumpkin, Tommy and the and the gang, who took the yeah. pumpkin at the end of the, end of, after the show. Yeah, I wonder pumpkin. what happened to that pumpkin. They said they were going to take it on a, an epic adventure. Yeah. And I believe they did. I believe they did. I believe that pumpkin had a good life. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. Mm. Rest in pieces. So yes, thank you to everyone who uh, has come along. It's got us very excited Roasting for the uh, pieces. <laughs> <laughs> roast <laughs> pumpkin. Do love roast pumpkin. Uh, but thanks to everyone that came along. We're very excited now for our UK shows. It gave us a bit of a bit of a taste. We're leaving in a couple of days. <laughs> I have not packed. No, neither. But do you pack before the time you're leaving for the airport? <laughs> You weirdo. Yeah, some people start like a week before. It's like, what if you, you're going to need something in there, surely? <laughs> I like, I've packed all of my underwear in here. It's like, okay. I haven't brushed my teeth in a week. <laughs> <laughs> my toothbrush is right down the bottom. <laughs> you're, the, you're an idiot. The first thing I put in there. <laughs> toothbrush and all of my clean underwear and my jammies. Oh, I've got five new brand spanking pairs of underpants. Overshare. Looking forward. You're a real pants man, aren't you, Dave? Oh, yeah. And, and some new pairs of socks. Nothing nicer than a new pair of socks. Yeah. The feeling. That is, not looking at them, just feeling them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hashtag relatable. He's doing that weird squinty thing he does when he says something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> just when you, sometimes you just know you've nailed it. <laughs> Anyway, we are very, very excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, we are back in the studio at the end of this episode to do some great time Patreon business. Yes. <laughs> it is time business. for everyone's favourite segment. Fat quota, fat quota, fat quota question. Fat quota, fat quota, fat quota question. Hey. Fat quota question. Widget the World Watcher. Someone tweeted saying it does sound like the Widget the World Watcher the jingle when Jess stings it and sings it. <laughs> What's Widget the World Watcher? I have no idea. Oh, right. Thank goodness. I no, felt like an idiot. Own, it was mate. from when I was uh, in primary school. So. Oh, when you were a boy. <laughs> yeah. It was a cartoon about... It was a super um, messagey cartoon. There was a purple alien who was here to protect the world, could shapeshift into different things, and it was all about protecting the environment, I think. Lame. Widget, the world watcher. It was big time for about a year and a half. Anyway, this week's fact quote or question comes from a Mr. Justin McCain. 
A plays a silly game when all the kids in the street they, they like, like to, to do, do the same. same. Fuck. Um, and he has he sent through one when the segment started. It fell through my holes in my system, and now we've got two quite fact quota questions from a Mister Justin McCain. Oh, a double, very good. Uh, and which means he got to give himself two different titles. Firstly, the old original title is Justin, responsible party boy McCain. Oh, I love that because he's still party boy, but responsibly. He's got a sash. Yeah. And, Walks around and the party. Hydrolite for everyone in the morning. <laughs> oh, what a legend. I fucking love that. Orange flavored? Of course. Yes. Guys, I just want to tell everyone the, the, uh, the punch has still not been spiked. <laughs> Continue partying. <laughs> Uh, and here's his uh, first fact quote or question is a question. And the question is, so I'm reading this on my phone and it's going to take me a little bit of skill here. If you had to have a contest against one person from any episode you'll have done so far, who would it be? What would it be a contest in and why? Oh, Helen Keller, question. fist fight. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's I mean, not my answer for sure. I mean, again. It's mine. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm, I don't want to double up. I'm saying <laughs> I oh, any competition. I mean, you kind of want to f- take someone on in a contest that it, you know, for me, you want to give them a fighting chance. So I would take on. Give me, you give me a. Give me a, a person from a past thing. Ernest Shackleton. Ernest Shackleton. All right. I'd take him on um, goal kicking comp. Aussie rules footy. <laughs> Match size. Sharon. Um, we play it like sort of like that basketball game, Donkey, only we play it uh, around the 30-meter arc of the footy field. I can't kick 50 meters. Let's do it from 30. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, fuck, he'd probably beat me. Shackleton. I reckon I could kick 50. If yeah. I believed in myself. Yeah. And I do. And you do, big time. Yep. Some say too much. <laughs> Who? Who says that? Who? Greg from accounts. I'm going to fucking kill Greg. I know. I, know. I think I would challenge. Here we go. Annie Oakley. Oh. To a, oh two. A hoedown. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you'd be in with the fighting chance. I think I would I would I would like to challenge her to a gunfight, knowing I would lose because I just want to watch her. I'd like yeah, I'd, I'd like to learn from her. Yes. But you know, the next thing she'd be asking you to put an apple on your head or oh, a no. cigarette in your mouth. And I'd trust her. <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. I would, but I'd still be like Ugh. Oh no, it wouldn't be fun. That'd be the weirdest feeling of like your teeth are about to be shot out of your face. It would be a wild feeling. And I'd love it. <laughs> I feel alive. Um, so that was part one, and that was from months ago. So sorry about that, Mr. Justin McCain. Uh, the second is from a man named uh, Mr. Justin McCain, <laughs> and his title now is Mailman of the Podcast. He's so practical and I useful, love it. always positive. Yeah. And this, this time he's given us a fact. It's a very short and sharp fact. It's a fact I, I learned uh, relatively recently, and it's, it's one of my favourite facts that I've learned in recent times, and that is, as he has worded it here, wombat's poop is cubic. As in? They, they're they're they little, little. Poop cubes. Poop cubes. Do you know that? That's cute. Isn't that wild? God, they're cute. How? They what must a, what have a like, great, powerful butt. They must have a square anus. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, you square. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's I was. I thought that would have been so, come up. So I wonder where I learnt it from. You love wombats. I do love wombats. It's my favourite animal. I know that. And I love poo. And I've never come across this. You do. He loves. It poo. feels like this is our Venn diagram you or love Visa wombats. card diagram. And I pay attention to you guys because I love you. Oh, you guys Jasper don't. Jasper Perkins. Don't follow that. Hey, you're the you're well, the well, middle well. of our Venn. You're wombat poop. Wow. Thanks. As in a cube. I'm a square. Well, you're, you're a, a 3D monster. square. You're a monster. And you've got more depth than a square. That mate. was a great fact and then a great 
question before that. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Justin, Justin McCain. McCain. One of no. our longest supporters. What a legend. Thanks so much, Justin. Now, at the end of the episodes, we also like to thank some people from Patreon. Of course, if you go to patreon.com slash do go on pod, you can join in on the fun and, of course, contribute a little bit back to the show. If you listen every week, it is much appreciated. and You can get up to two bonus episodes that no one else hears. So uh, get involved if you are so inclined. We really do appreciate that. And uh, to kick us off, Jess, what are, what are we going to do? To thank these people on our Halloween special. Well, I reckon, and this is entirely my idea and I'm taking all of the credit. I love it. I think because it's a Halloween spooky kind of episode, we should give people spooky names. Yes. That was my idea. That's a great idea. And I'm claiming it. It's weird how defensive you're being about it. Yeah, it's a good idea. And I get all the credit. Yep, it's all yours. So Matt thinks it's a good idea. Dave, what do you think? I think it's a fine idea. (laughs) Yes, I'm taking that. Fine, it's a fine idea. He's saying that like a posh person would. That is a uh, fine which idea. Which is the same as great. Yes. I say. I say. A fine idea. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like someone's just suggested we go out hunting. Oh, fine idea. <laughs> oh, I do say yes. Oh, yes, old sport. Light up the pipe. So, yeah, let's give him some spooky names. Ooh. Okay, well, can I kick it off? Yes. Uh, from a, he's got a he's from a spooky place in Queensland called Kuparu, <laughs> and his name is Cameron Fullwood. And his spooky name uh, would be is Scammeron <laughs> Fullwood. He's always erect, and that's scary. <laughs> Especially, yeah, it's the, and that's the scam. Scams are scary. Scams are very scary. Scams are scary. What about full woods? Especially when scams are on and a scam are on. Yeah. <laughs> full woods. Full wood. <gasps> well, is that what you were saying? Full woods. You don't, you don't go into full woods at night. Fool me woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good at this. <laughs> I like scam. Uh, what's your idea, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sucked in. Yeah, my great idea. <laughs> Uh, thank You're you so just much. Shit at it. Thank you so much, Scamron. Scamron. Yes. Full wood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd also love to thank from Grand Prairie in old Texaco, Texas T, Texas, <laughs> Mister. Uh, uh, I think um, his title was the most average American when he did a fact wrote a question, Mister Joe Smith. With the middle initial M, the M is for murder. <laughs> <laughs> Dial Joe for murder. <laughs> um, uh, go. Go. Ghost. Go. Go Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost. M for murder. Smith. Smithereens. <laughs> He's been yes, bo- that's good. Joe M. Smithereens. Or do you want ghost. it to be ghost? <laughs> ghost. Ghost M for murder ghost smithereens. Ghost M for, for murder smithereens. smithereens. Feel free to change your Twitter handle <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I love this because there'll be people, every single one of these will have a much more obvious one. Yeah. And people are like, I was yelling. <laughs> There's been a few people who tweeted about uh, Blockbuster Tofu like, surely... The obvious one is not blockbuster toe for grace. <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> Hang on, that how, how, how you couldn't think of anything. Else, I don't think we've even mentioned this is bringing blockbuster toe for grace uh, period to an end and for what, another fine year. What a time it has been! Yeah, we can't. We're already making. It's only eleven months away to the next block. It's my favorite block. Oh well, yeah, to I'm saying block. it. I'm saying yep. it now. It's my favorite Best block. Best block ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, would you like to thank some people? Yes, I certainly would. I'd like Please. to thank from Rochdale South or Rochdale South, depending on how you would like to pronounce it, either correctly or incorrectly. Ghostdale South. In Queensland, Screamsland. <laughs> oh, like there we think. go. We're warming up. Yeah. Rachel Razi. Rachel Ooh. Raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they have poison things in them. Ooh. Hachel. 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 That's how she 
leaves the room, <laughs> it's a bit like, see you in hell. She's like, hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, y'all, nasty. Oh, Ooh. that's good. <laughs> she sounds like an angry person. Y'all nasty. <laughs> y'all nasty. Hey, y'all. I love that southern accent. Is that y'all? Y'all oh, nasty. Oh, that's great. So good. Thanks, hey, y'all. Uh, are we going to get to go to Southern America, Dave? Yeah, hoping to. Texas is definitely in the... A lot of this is in Texas. It's a big state. You're a big state. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank also from Ludlow in Shropshire. 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 Great, Great Britain, where we will be in about three days' time after this comes out. So My exciting. goodness. I would like to thank Kieran Berry. Kieran Berry. <laughs> like, yes. Like buried. Oh. <laughs> oh. You were so excited it just sounded like you were saying his name back. Yeah, I was. Kill, Kill and, buried. <laughs> and buried. Killed and buried. Killed and buried. Kill and buried. Both and good. Buried. Both on the. Both Kill and bury, I think. Kill and bury. Kill and bury. Yeah, rather than being murdered on Halloween. So sorry about that. Uh, Kieran Berry. Kill, Kill and, and buried. buried from Shropshire. Thank you so much for your support. Shropshire. What? Bloody means a lot. Uh, can I thank some people? Please. Woohoo! <laughs> Here we <laughs> go. Party <laughs> started. <laughs> <laughs> I've got really hyped all of a sudden too. Right. I think I'm just having too much fun. Um, from London, where we're going to be <gasps> in three days' time. <gasps> My goodness, let's hang out. <laughs> the three of us. Yeah, we'll be staying. Are you going to be? You're going to be in London. Yeah, we're all going to London, London. Matt. I will be next to you on the plane because I always have to sit in the middle, as you know. Wow. Guys, what are you doing for blow? <laughs> blow <Vember. laughs> Oh, That's not. I good. guess blow. <laughs> yeah. Which one's blow again? That's Kirk, right? <laughs> yes. From London, I would like to thank Joel Davison. Ghoul. Yep. Oh. Ravenson. Oh, Ravenson. Ghoul Ravenson. Ghoul Ravenson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tingles. It's going to be scary when we walk to the car. our cars now. It's very. <laughs> don't. Oh, it's don't. so scary out there. That's I'm be... sleeping here tonight. Seriously, don't. Don't. It's don't. way no, seriously. No, seriously, don't. I'll tell <laughs> mum, don't. It's way don't. scarier to stay no. here. Don't. don't. In this factory. Yeah, it would be oh. scarier. Okay, thank you to Ghoul Ravenson. I'd also like to thank from Salisbury in Queensland. A couple of Queenslanders. Yeah, a few because three Queenslanders. I'd like Sorry, to... Screamslanders. Yeah. Oh. I'd like to thank Ethan Archer. Deathen. Deathen? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better watch out. You're going to get Deathen. Hey, Joel. <laughs> hey, Joel. <laughs> uh, Ethan Archer. What do you got? Archer, they kill people with arrows. Yeah. yeah they do. Farcher. Eating, <laughs> eating farches. That is spooky. What? <laughs> <laughs> eating, eating farches, which is a face in Italian. So you're going to eat your face. Well, if you remember in the episode, Annabelle the doll was writing on parchment paper. Oh, yes. Ethan parchment. <gasps> <gasps> okay, mine spooky. was eating a face, but, yeah, no, nah, okay, let's go with... Paper. I like I like giving options. <laughs> hey, there's no yeah. wrong answers. Yeah, I'm good with yours. Wait, yours was eating face. I thought it was eating farts. What? Yeah, so did I originally. What? But I farcha was... means face in Italian. Oh, oh right. I did. That didn't sink in. That's when you good. Said I that. thought you were trying to pun on focaccia <laughs> <laughs> by leaving out half the letters. Wouldn't put a past you. That's true. I am an idiot. <laughs> Wouldn't you just put say focaccia if that's what she was doing? Eat a focaccia. <laughs> oh, but oh. it's a poisoned focaccia. Oh, it's got That's stuff bad. in it that you don't like, oh. so you don't enjoy it. <laughs> That's bad. And but you eat it it's, tentatively. It's 15% off today. Oh. That's good. But that that uh, is will incur uh, an extra cost in the coming months. That's bad. <laughs> but can I go get now? A free, <laughs> get a free frozen yogurt. <laughs> I call it froggit. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> oh, fun. Isn't it fun recounting funny stuff from decades at your? Yes. Oh, but Ethan Archer, thank you so much. I'm sure we gave you something there to work with. Um, face in Italian. Yeah. Imagine, like, Farcha. Face in Italian sounds like that could be a horror movie name. Farcha. What Farcha. was your first name for Ethan? Eaton. What about Beat and Farcha? 
or beaten facha, beaten, beaten face. face. Oh, like Michael Myers or something. You know, one of those guys that wears a crazy mask. Looks like he's got a beaten face. Ooh. You know that that mask uh, I learned uh, in the last few weeks is based on William Shatner. Star Trek. Yeah, isn't that wild? It's a William Shatner mask. I learned that from Nick Maso Mason on his podcast, The Nick Maso Mason Hour. <laughs> Ah, yes. Which is what I call it. It's actually called Weekly Planet, but, but uh, <laughs> I think mine. Is, I think mine is better. Yeah, it's better. They should change it. The Nick Mason Mason Hour with Mr. Sunday Movies. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Cute jingle. Anyway, they they will not return my emails. Weird. Yeah, I said emails weird. Anyway. All right, well, we have to go. <laughs> We're forgetting how to talk. There's something wrong with you. Uh, at any time, you can get in contact with this very podcast by going to dogoonpod.com, following all the links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. It's all slash or at dogoonpod. And, of course, our email account is dogoonpod at gmail.com. And you can submit a topic at any time. Also go to dogoonpod.com and click submit a topic. It's yeah. that Easy. Or if you don't want to click, go slash submit dash a dash topic <laughs> dash. I'd just click, I reckon, but that's just me. Instead of dash, though, because it's Halloween, I'm going to say slash. Yeah. Ooh. Like this, the guitarist. From meow, 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 <laughs> He's terrifying. Meow. That hat. <laughs> oh, his hat's coming right for us. <laughs> oh, he wants us to wear his hat. It's got boofy hair. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to go. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to this Halloween special. Until next week, I will say thank you and goodbye. Slaters. <laughs> Slaters. Slater bugs. Um, Terrifying. Um, fly. No, nothing. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Die. Die. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
Crumbie. <laughs> Bloody stud. All right. Now, I'm still with you, but I've got a backup plan. Um, <laughs> you got to. You got to have a backup. Quick question. Oh. He. <clears throat> I. Have to I, go. <laughs> I, I can't lie. That, that, that does hurt. But. I think we can work through it. <laughs> Ask him what job he does. Oh, no. No, oh, no, no. I don't want to know. What job Don't do ruin you do? this nice moment. He's an accountant, isn't he? You dog. <laughs> I never would have guessed it looking at you. <laughs> no, it's the cool pants. St- can you stand up near the light? No. <laughs> he could not light. look more Leave like an light. accountant. All right, so... In a beauty... And I love accountants. I love the way you Matt, crunch them numbers. Matt. Okay. I'm going to keep to time. Um, 